In today's video, we're gonna be looking at the Anker F3800 Plus Power Station. Now this one's a big boy. It's a 240 volt and of course 120 volt. They announced this power station a month ago and I was supposed to get one of these, but unfortunately it was destroyed in shipment. So lots of other reviews happened and they exposed a major problem. When you turn a power station on and you activate the AC outlets, whether it's 120 or 240 volt and the unit just sits, it does consume some electricity. Well, unfortunately, this F3800 Plus had one of the worst idle consumption rates of any power station ever made. And people do sometimes make mistakes, so as soon as my replacement arrived, I conducted the exact same test. Over a 24-hour period with the AC inverter on and no load, the unit actually ate up 50% of the battery, that is really excessive, and that actually put it in the worst category possible. So why am I even doing this review? Well, fortunately, I've got some good news. Anchor released a brand new firmware version that actually addresses the idle consumption issue. And my response to that was, I just didn't believe it. Now, if I wanted to cheat, I'd write that software so that if there was no load on that AC outlet, it would simply put the thing to sleep, possibly leaving a little bit of voltage on to sense a load that could wake it up. So I went ahead and connected a small voltmeter to the outlet to make sure there was a little load, but also to be able to record the voltage. Now the display goes to sleep just because the unit unfortunately cannot be set to leave it on all the time. So I actually was getting into this thing remotely, changing the brightness to essentially wake it up. And after the same 24 hour period, look at the difference. The unit now remains at 75%, meaning it only consumed 25% of the battery. With one firmware update, this thing went from being the worst idle consumption efficiency rate to now being the best unit I've ever tested. So even though my voltmeter never showed a break in power or voltage, I wanted to plug in a load and make sure that it would just turn on and that the port was in no way asleep. I plugged in my 120 volt heater and immediately the power was on. There was no interruption. So I can say with confidence along with these tests that I've shown you that they truly did change the efficiency simply by rewriting firmware. Now that I know this unit is actually good, let's do a real review, starting with the 240 volt output. Now this thing is capable of 6,000 watts of AC output at 240 volts. Test that, I'm running this huge heater that runs at 5,500 watts at 240 volts and it works perfectly. You guys wanted all the batteries inside these things to be lithium iron phosphate for the longest life possible and you got it, but unfortunately they come at a price. The unit is very heavy and if you wanna make it heavier, you can actually add additional batteries. But of course this is a good thing. The battery inside this thing is 3,800 watt hours. You can daisy chain up to two units right directly to the unit on top, but you can also add additional units to the side and there are expansion panels as well. I'm starting with one of the best features of this model that other units simply don't have. It is capable of being charged at 240 volts. Now that isn't really a big deal. Many other models can do that. What they're unable to handle is 240 volt pass-through charging, meaning you could be running a 240 volt load with this anchor while you're charging it at 240 volt at the same time. You can charge this thing at 120 volt directly with the standard AC computer cord, but if you wanna do it at 240, you do need to get this generator adapter cord. Now you don't have to have a generator, it could just be another 240 volt source. But for this test, I'm gonna plug in this adapter box with one end into my Predator generator, and this box immediately lights up. This is a really difficult display to read in sunlight, but normally you'd have this thing indoors and you'd use a long 240 volt extension cord. But as you can see, it is charging at about 2800 watts via 240 volt. But there's a couple of things to be aware of. If you try to plug say a 120 volt heater or an appliance into the built-in 120 volt ports, while the unit is using that generator adapter charging a 240 volt, those ports do not work. However, you can run a 240 volt load off of the 240 volt outlet. That works just fine. Now you might be thinking, how do you run a 120 volt load? You will be connected to an interlock panel in your house. That allows you to run 120 volt and 240 volt circuits. So with this setup, it actually could run 120 volt circuits, but they'd be going through something like your interlock, or you could use an anchor smart panel, or if you really wanted to, there are splitters that can go into that 240 volt outlet where you could plug in 120 volt loads. In terms of power quality, I use a pretty high-end analyzer, and this is in fact putting out pure sign power. And though the wave on this analyzer looks a bit crooked, it is just super accurate, and that is completely normal. And for you real power nerds, I also tested voltage total harmonic distortion. This is kind of the noise that the inverter puts out, and it's around 3%. Your home's electrical system is around 5 to 8%, so 3% is still perfect and totally within the normal limits. 
I also conducted a battery efficiency test. This is important. The battery inside this thing is 3,800 watt hours, but that is not the actual output you will get. So the difference in the stated capacity versus what you get is in fact the efficiency. To test that, run it to zero with a load, and it gave me a 3,235 watt hour delivery, meaning this unit scored an 85% efficiency, which is actually quite good for a larger model. Just like the original F3800, this Plus also supports app control, and you can actually control both the regular and the Plus versions, or any mix of them that you might have at home. While the app is not required in any way to operate the unit, you will need to use it if you're going to do something like a firmware update, and as I saw during this test, that is definitely something you'll want to get when they release them. Physically, this thing looks exactly the same as the original F3800, except for the ports. You've still got six AC outlets on the side. Additionally, you've got a 120 volt RV outlet, and of course, you've got that 240 volt plug as well. If you plan to use it on any type of a transfer panel, that is definitely something you're gonna love having. The display is also super bright and easy to read, unless of course you're outdoors. The big change is the solar input. The original Anchor had a really limiting factor on the ports. They had strict voltage requirements, they have increased the voltage operating range on these ports, so you can use them not only with anchor panels, but a lot of other different panels that you might already have. But they did change the type of ports. Originally, they were using more standard ports. Now you've got a proprietary anchor port. Now at the end, of course, you have MC4, so you can plug in anything you want, but if you lose one of these cables or you don't order a spare, you aren't gonna be able to plug in any type of a standard connector. But on a positive note, each one of these ports can handle separately 1600 watts of solar input. So this is a big unit. It was a complicated review with a lot of different tests, but due to the other negative reviews, I wanted to be sure that I shared all of the details, the camera shots, so that you could be certain that the results I gave you were in fact accurate. So three weeks ago, I would have given this thing a a very poor score, but fortunately Anchor's firmware update completely changed it and this thing is definitely a top unit and one you should consider if you're looking for a 240 volt power station loaded with features and can handle a huge amount of output and input. And also I didn't want to leave this slide out for the sake of being complete. There are some things you want to be aware of for charging the unit and outputting power. First off, you can charge it via 120 volt while outputting 120 volt as well, meaning this thing can be a UPS and it will recharge automatically. You cannot charge it via 120 volt and be outputting 240 volt like you can in some competitors units. But the difference of this one, of course, is you can charge it via 240 volt while actively outputting 240 volt as well. And as I showed you, the internal 120 volt outlets are disabled if you're charging it via 240. And finally, the recharging wattages are pretty confusing with this thing. If you just buy the main F3800 Plus unit, you can natively charge it at up to 3300 watts. If you add another battery, you can do it at 4300 watts, and with two batteries, it reaches 6000 watts. I don't really understand why that changes or how it uses the batteries to do that, but be aware the main unit is only 3300 watts capable. And if you like this video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the Silver Symbol channel for more videos coming up.